Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Scott Harris. We had an opportunity this week to do a little something different when the Afghanistan ambassador to the United States came to Central Florida and took a few minutes to sit down and talk. Sayyid so Jawad is the Afghanistan's ambassador to the United States. He was appointed to that post in 2003, is that correct? Correct. But you're very familiar with both countries. You left Afghanistan in the uh, Soviet invasion in the 80s. You actually came to the United States. You went to school both in Germany and San Francisco, and you worked here for many years and went back to your country to work uh, for President Hamid Karzai after September 11th. Did I get all that right? Absolutely right. Yes, I did work here. And when I get an idea from you, your country, I think, is going to become even more important. Well, we're going to learn a lot more about it in the next few years. A lot of Americans began to learn about it after uh, September 11th, but then our emphasis has shifted to Iraq in one way or another. Right. But I gather, and maybe you can tell me if you think it's the same thing, that there may be some emphasis diplomatically and militarily shifting back to Afghanistan. Do you see that coming? Very much. Uh, President-elect Obama was very clear on his position about the need to do more in Afghanistan, both in the term of financial assistance, reconstruction assistance, and more troop that needs to be uh, sent to Afghanistan in order to overcome some of the current security challenges. So we are very much looking forward to an enhanced degree of the commitment of U.S. assistance to Afghanistan. What mistakes are we making, in the United States making, in the way we, we deal with the problems in Iraq and maybe have dealt with the problems in, in Afghanistan? Well, we are making a lot of progress. Let's not lose sight of that, especially in Afghanistan. So if you compare where we were six years ago during the time of the Taliban, that Afghanistan was a source of danger to itself, to the region, to the world, we have made tremendous progress. Yet we have not overcome the security challenges. I think the big mistake that was made in the past uh, six years was to build uh, the capacity of the Afghan security forces to confront the terrorists and the Taliban on one hand, and on the other hand, address the issue of the terrorist sanctuaries on the other side of the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Pakistan, Pakistan, I'm sorry, Afghanistan, the history of Afghanistan has been a country that it's been very hard for somebody to, to come into and take control of. The Soviets found that, but this goes back centuries, does it not? That's true, but you have not come to Afghanistan to take control. Right. You came because we have asked you to come over. The, the elements, those who were trying to take control of Afghanistan, and they did, were the terrorists that came, the Taliban, that enslaved my people and then turned Afghanistan into a sanctuary for the terrorists in Al-Qaeda. So your presence is very much needed. Afghans are very pragmatic. They know that without your assistance, Afghanistan will go back to the days of the misery that it once it was. Our concern in Afghanistan is to, that you might leave sooner before the job is done. It's not so much the concern of that, that how, how, how long you're going to be staying. How, how, how is the governing? I, it, we hear a lot, in fact, in the days uh, of Taliban, we heard the Northern Alliance tribal leaders, uh, which were, were tribal a lot. Of, there wasn't a central opposition, so to speak. The government now, uh, do you deal with a lot of factions internally? The, governor, the, the government right now is really an, uh, a broad-based elected government. Uh, it, uh, the president of Afghanistan was elected through direct vote for the first time in the history of Afghanistan. But still, we don't have adequate resources to establish our presence all over the country to deliver services, to make a difference in the life of the Afghan people. So we do need more resources. We need, we need more qualified people to establish our authority in the form of delivering services. Uh, this is a challenge that we face in Afghanistan. We, we have an elected president. We have an elected parliament. We are establishing new institutions like the court system, the police, and others. But they're very young. And is this new to a lot of the people? It is. It is. Uh, some of the uh, presence of the police in some of the provinces today has never had happened in the past in the history of Afghanistan. But, and the reason is that in the past we didn't have the threat of the regional and international terrorism. So it was a relatively poor country, but the forces inside were, were containing each other. But today we have this foreign element of threat of regional and international terrorism by Arabs, Uzbeks, Chechnya, and many other Pakistanis are coming to Afghanistan and, and causing trouble not only for Afghans but also for Pakistan, for the region, for the world. That's why we need to establish these state institutions. The traditional mechanism of controlling the society doesn't work anymore. Do you think... Are you optimistic? I'm very optimistic. We have, we have come a long way in Afghanistan. We are not out of the woods, certainly, but uh, uh, if you compare to where we started seven years ago, oh, it's amazing. Just look at an example. I, as ambassador of Afghanistan, I'm, I'm coming and speaking at the school. 
to a number of uh, young kids who are interested to know what's going on in Afghanistan. This is, this is, a, this is a tremendous change. Do you find a lot of interest in Americans in, in Afghanistan very now? Much, very much. This is an example when, when these, these young uh, children in here are, are, are putting months or, or, or weeks of work to learn more about my country. I am so grateful for that. And this is, this is a very good for me, for, uh, for Afghanistan, and for the children. We are building bridges of understanding between these different people. What do you find is the biggest misconception Americans have about your country? A lot of people think that Afghanistan started either with the Soviet invasion in 1979 or with the 9-11. That's, that's not... That's, it didn't exist before then. That's yeah. A, yeah, we it's, never heard of it. Yeah. Exactly. It's a 5,000-year country. It's with a, with, a, with a rich history, with a rich past, a country that was moderate, that was... Uh, um, uh, prosperous uh, people lived in in in, 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 uh, in a dignified life, uh, a uh, different life from what what we yeah, do yeah, certainly. Yeah. And but they were proud of this difference. There's uh, there's a country that is very diverse geographically, ethnic wise, religious wise, because it was a crossroad of of invasions and civilizations. Mm -hmm. well, trade routes for many centuries. Definitely, from China all the way to Greek, from from Russia all the way to India. Everybody crossed through Afghanistan. As, as we go forward in the next year, what's the most important thing you think the United States can do, or the people here can do, to help you in your goals? We need a surge of the troops, a small you surge of the troops in Afghanistan on the short term. Long term, we need your assistance to build the capacity of our police in the army. It's is this also, training? Is this money? Is this both. It's training and equipment. Uh, it's training and equipment. The training for the army is going very well. The equipment is also going well, but we need further assistance in building a capable police force. Our police force is not up to the difficult task that they are facing. And this is going to be a lot more uh, uh, sustainable. It's less expensive to build this capacity in us, in Afghans. This is our country. It's our job to defend it. There is no shortage of courage. It's just shortage of skills. In equipment, and if you do that, you will be very grateful for the sacrifices of your sons and daughters who are fighting in Afghanistan to make Afghanistan a safer place for us and for the rest of the world. But they should be together with their families here. It's a, we will do this job for them. It will be as their partner in that difficult part of the world, provided that we get the assistance to build that capacity.